Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today I will take a walk through suburban Stockholm starting here next to Gubbengen station which is on the south side of town and from here I will walk through some residential areas uh, all the way to Farsta which is almost at the end of the subway line. So uh, this is a pretty typical uh, working class neighborhood I should say it used to be at least pretty working class but now since prices have skyrocketed everywhere in in um, all parts of Stockholm it's uh, yeah it's more like a, a, a middle income area I guess lots of children's families with kids living around here as well um, as there's plenty of green spaces around well there's plenty of green spaces around any part of Stockholm so that's not really a, a selling argument though but uh, yeah you you will probably see lots of kids and families with kids in this video um, and over here we have a really nice place selling delicious pizzas as well as uh, very very good gelato I guess I will talk occasionally on this video, but uh, not all the time because it's going to be quite a long walk and I'm a bit tired, so I don't have the energy to go on rambling all the time about every little thing I see. But I guess you're curious about the weather. It's currently 28 degrees, almost 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, and I'm filming this in the first half of August 2022. 28 degrees is uh, quite unusual for this time of the year but it's another heat wave across large parts of Europe right now and we are getting some of that hot air here in Sweden too. Uh, otherwise I would say in the low 20s would be more typical for this time of the year. These are very, very typical, older style Swedish uh, apartment buildings. Nothing fancy at all about them, but usually the inside tend to be quite nice and they're relatively spacious. And uh, yeah, I guess most Swedes have an, some experience of if not living in a house like this, at least they've probably visited them countless times. You find them all over the country. Not sure exactly when they're built, but my guess would be around the 60s. Maybe even 50s, but probably more like 60s. And one thing you see quite often right now in Sweden is that they're, or at least in Stockholm, is that they're making all the residential neighborhoods a bit denser. So you often see newer buildings popping up in areas like this as well. Uh, I don't see any at this place where I'm currently at, but I'm sure throughout this walk we will see plenty of them. I will try to remember to mention it once, once we find one. And the reason why I'm doing this walk here in this area is because I'm currently uh, borrowing a friend's place for two weeks because he's traveling um, during his summer holiday so his apartment was empty so me and my family could stay there for a while. It's only been like three or four nights so far, but we're enjoying it. It's, it's a nice area. Maybe not as nice as Årsta, where we stayed last month, which we all really, really enjoyed. This neighborhood is a little bit further out and a little bit... How should I say? Årsta felt extremely friendly and safe and 
also had lots of really wonderful nature um, next to it. It was close to the water and yeah, all sorts of good things going on there. This area maybe scores a few points lower on all those metrics in my opinion. So we wouldn't uh, say no to a place here but uh, if we could choose I think uh, we prefer Årsta. But the thing with housing in Stockholm is that you can't really choose where to live uh, unless you are very rich and buy an apartment. But if you're uh, looking for a rental apartment, um, the supply is so small and the demand is so high. So despite me, I've been like in the, there's like an official queuing system. I've been waiting there for 15 years or I've been like paying my month, uh, annual fee for 15 years. But still, that's not enough to freely be able to choose where you want to live. And if you want to live in the inner city of Stockholm, waiting times are more like 30 years, which is completely insane. But that's, that's the kind of time you need to wait for a first-hand rental contract in central Stockholm. Uh, with 15 years, you can get something in the, in the outer parts of Stockholm. So, and if you want like a newly built place when, with, where the rent is usually a bit higher, then that's easier to get than an older place because we have like this, um, I don't know exactly how to describe it, but basically the rents are government controlled. You, the, the landlords can't freely set the rents, so it's not market based. Um, so that means that older buildings are usually relatively cheap. Uh, but if you buy a more modern, or if you rent a more modern apartment, with uh, which is better equipped and newly built, then the rent is usually as much as 50, 60, 70 percent higher. Uh, and not all people can afford that, so the demand for those is uh, smaller than for the cheaper, older apartments. I think I will turn down here. So I've been walking to the west, but now I'm turning down and I will walk towards the south for probably most of this walk because Farsta is south from Gubengen. This street is pretty cute though. And kind of unusual with this kind of townhouse type uh, buildings. They're not super common in Stockholm or in Sweden. So this, this street I passed here uh, the other day as well and it was like, oh, this, in, this area is interesting because it's, yeah, it's not your, not exactly your typical Swedish suburban neighborhood, I would say, with th this kind of buildings. It's more common to have like separate uh, buildings. Because of the crazy har housing market in Stockholm, I'm, I'm sure these are crazy expensive. Way more expensive that, that, than they might look like. If I remember, I can look up the, the prices around here and put it in a video description. And for your reference, we're roughly 20 minutes away from central Stockholm uh, if you're taking the subway. 15 to 20 minutes from the city center, um, which by Stockholm standards is kind of far out. I think the longest trip from the end station to the city center is probably something like 30 minutes, maybe 35. So yeah, 20 minutes is a little bit on the, on the far side.
and yeah I probably mentioned this on <laughs> every walk since I came back to Sweden but uh, Stockholm is one of the greenest capitals in Europe and after living for many many years in Tokyo which is pretty much a concrete jungle all the greenery here in Stockholm feels really like yeah it, it feels really good to have so much greenery everywhere it definitely affects my stress levels for sure uh, over there you can see one of the subway trains pretty far away this is by the way Gubbengsfeltet which is this big open space uh, between Gubbengen and Hökarängen Yes, this is one of the major roads cutting through this area. This one is called Örbyleden, where there are many buses as well. One there and another one here. Public trans transportation here in Stockholm is pretty good, I would say. It's, it's uh, not as good as Tokyo, obviously, but uh, not many places are. But still, I think Stockholm does fairly well and uh, the pricing is kind of interesting like if you just buy a single ticket or a single trip it's very expensive um, 39 Swedish crowns for a single trip even if it's just one stop um, that's about in Japanese yen it's over 500 yen uh, however pretty much everyone who lives here and uses public tra transportation regularly tend to buy a monthly ticket those are around a thousand Swedish crowns per month and allows you to travel as much as you want on all the different transportation methods so subway buses but also some uh, kind of commuter trains as well as uh, uh, ferries this is a nice little area with a bakery and a bar and a outdoor pizza oven very nice place. If you ever find yourself in Hakarengen, I highly recommend stopping by here, especially at summer. Oh, wait, I am. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm on the right track. I think I should walk down this way. Not 100% sure though. Let me take a little look at the map. Ah, uh, yes, I can walk this little path here. That's that's all right.
I think this is an example of what I mentioned before that they build like new buildings between like in the in the older residential neighborhoods to make it like denser so this is one of those for example and they're usually built so that they kind of matches the surrounding buildings like you can still see that they are new but they don't stand out too much kind of like it that way they can make better use of the infrastructure as well rather than building like entire new neighborhoods in that like even further out uh, from the city i think this is a better um better way to to um meet demand of new housing. So this is uh, one of many many playgrounds in this neighborhood. As I think I mentioned in previous videos it's really striking like the size and the frequency of playgrounds here in Sweden compared to Tokyo. It really shows you that the authorities uh, really think that children are important in this society here in Sweden in a very different way in a way that I never felt uh, at all in, in um, Japan there's even some animals living here I think maybe goats but I don't see them I think it's supposed to be some goats here Well, at least we have these guys. <laughs> oh. I think I need to take a look at the map to figure out which way to go from here. Okay, looks like looks like it's this way. Okay, it says don't feed the horses, so apparently there's horses here as well from time to time. Not right now though.
So we should be about halfway to Farta now, or maybe even closer than that. Oops, wrong way. This is the right way. I've only walked here once before in my life, so I'm not super comfortable or not super familiar with with the roads around here
Okay, a bit of construction going on here. Let's see. I'm not sure exactly. Oh, okay, I should be heading this way anyway, so I think, we're, I think I'm good. If you're watching this and you've enjoyed following me, following me on this walk this far, it would be interesting to hear uh, your impressions. What do you, what what do you think about this area or this city, judging from what I've shown you in today's walk, and how does it compare to where wherever you live? Uh, if you have time, it would be great if you could share your thoughts in a comment. Are you also living in a green city like this or perhaps you don't think this is very green because you live in the proper countryside somewhere or uh, yeah what do you think about the, the buildings the amount of people or rather lack of people maybe I should say things like that anything anything goes just your spontaneous thoughts and opinions would be very interesting to hear Looks like they are maybe renovating this park. Looks quite nice. I don't really see any construction going on though, so I don't I'm not sure why it's sealed off. But looks like it's not open yet. We will now we are approaching Farsta centrum like the center of Farsta which is a more densely built area with lots of high-rise apartment buildings with high-rise of course Swedish standards so that means like 10 floors maybe um, but uh, yeah you will see soon and again it's this area is not fancy by any means rather the opposite I would say uh, but still I think it's a pretty pretty good place to live thanks to all the greenery and nature Here's an elementary school. There's quite a lot of those as well here in Stockholm. And for those of you who are interested, childcare in Sweden is quite affordable. Um, it's capped. The, the monthly fee depends on your household income. It's not free. Uh, but it's capped the highest cost you will ever pay per month is about 1,500 crowns or 150 US dollars or 20,000 yen and that includes meals and diapers and whatever you might need as well and then I think from the from the year the child turns three it's it gets even cheaper but I'm not 100% sure of that but I think it essentially becomes free for five hours a day or something like that then you just have to pay like for if you need more hours than that you have to pay a little bit but yeah five fifteen hundred crowns per day that's for the full time before the child turns three years old And just again to reference that to the costs in Japan, it's about um, 
a third or a quarter of what you would pay in Japan if you're uh, someone or household with a higher income than average or maybe and maybe half of what you would pay if you're an average earning in household so yeah as you can see now we are getting closer to the subway station so there are more residential buildings Over there you can actually see part of the subway station which is next to Farta Centrum where there's a lot of shops and restaurants and other things so once I get there I will wrap up this video but uh, a few more minutes Again, these are high rises by Swedish standards. <laughs> Not so much compared to Japan, but quite high by Swedish standards. So, subway station over there, 
Farta Centrum over here and that's where I will wave goodbye to you. Thank you so much for joining me on this walk. Hope you liked it. Um, as always, I will see you again soon on another live walk. Here in Sweden I'm trying to at least do a live walk every weekend and one pre-recorded video like this um, that will be published every week, at least once every week. So here's Farsta Centrum, suburban Stockholm. I guess I should just take you on a little tour around here too, as I'm sure some of you are very curious about this area, what it might look like. Fruit vendors and yeah, a bunch of department stores with most of the shops one might need. It's a pretty big uh, shopping area for like, not, not all the suburbs in Stockholm have this, uh, this kind of shopping facilities. This I would say is a pretty major shopping district for in the south of Stockholm. But yeah, I guess that will be it for today. Thank you so much for joining and uh, I see you all next time. Bye bye. Hey do. Auf Wiedersehen. Tschüss.